And in 2015 uh, came, of course, the UN SDGs as well as the US Climate uh, Agreement. So then we said, okay, based on those goals and so on and so forth, we need a transition plan. And we came together, each business management and the people down the line, to essentially produce a transition plan. Uh, in April, we call it April 2030. And April is a, a pulp and paper company with forestry operations in Indonesia as well as manufacturing. I'm using April as an illustration because I also is a chairman of April. Right? And this transition plan uh, essentially address all the stakeholders, the five Cs, right? Uh, in terms of decarbonization, you know, we essentially focus a lot on reduction, you know, and I happen also to be the one at the corporate level driving sustainability as well as continuous improvement. We learn from the Japanese, you know, the Kaizen, and going down to the plant to really, really look at operations and reduce excessive consumption of energy, water, chemicals, and so on and so forth. That's one element of our transition plan in the decarbonization. The other one is, of course, transition energy. Uh, in the bioeconomy, pulp and paper, April, we're actually 80% biomass energy already. Because from the trees, uh, you separate the cellulose to go and produce pulp. The lignin that holds the cellulose together, we dry it, and it goes to the boiler to produce power. So we are 80% uh, biomass energy. We had 20% coal, but we are transitioning to solar energy. Today we have 11 megawatts of energy, solar energy, and the beautiful thing is that the panels are built over landfill, which are completely uh, non-usable for any other purposes. And we hope by 2050, we move up to 50 megawatts. You know, that's the ambition we have. The third element of decarbonization is the climate uh, nature-based solution. Uh, when we convert our concessions to plantation, you know, we conserve the high conservation value for us. And in 2015, we made a commitment that for every hectare of plantation, I want to have one hectare of conservation area. Today, we are 0.83, which means we are 40% of the land, our conservation area. So in a sense, we have already exceeded the COP requirements of 30%. But we are going towards one-to-one, -to -one, uh, a nature-neutral solution to the way we do things. In fact, we have already bought some production concession and in the process of trying to convert it to conservation uh, license. Uh, even when we do that, you know, we would be more than nature neutral, be nature positive. You know, and it's just not carbon alone. Uh, we talk a lot about biodiversity nowadays. You know, and we have FFI work with us in these conservation areas. Uh, the largest piece is called Real Ecosystem Restoration, about twice the size of Singapore, uh, in one single patch. And they have done all the biodiversity survey, carbon survey, and so on and so forth. Right. So, so that is the decarbonization part of it. 